Assalamualaikum and hi everyone Welcome again to the series of online lectures on artificial neural networks Today I would like to continue from the previous lecture where we have started to talk about image classification In today's video I would just like to talk about uh, an example where we want to try to recognize image that uh, obtained from uh, cancer, uh, tissue scan from patient okay so we are talking about classifying images whether the image is cancerous or not so this is the this is some sample of the actual images so to our eye we we, we don't see which uh, image is good or bad so this images comes from the data set which is uh, publicly available uh, these images was created by dr william h Wahlberg. he's a physician at the university of Wisconsin Hospital at Medicine uh, USA so in these uh, images Dr. Wolberg used fluid samples taken from patients and then he also utilized a graphical computer program to perform the analysis of the cytological features uh, based on the digital scan of sample tissue which were taken from his patient so for the medical doctor they can identify which image is cancerous which one is not but to our eyes we don't know so we can create based on knowing which one which image is cancerous and which one is not we can create a data set uh, and feed this data set to a neural network an artificial neural network so as I have mentioned before we don't feed this image directly to the neural network because it will result in a very big uh, ANN structure as shown in the chapter 5 which is not really which is not recommended at all instead it is better to use uh, the one in the as shown in the wood recognition uh, system from Cairo where we extract features the features of these images have been extracted for us so luckily and if you look at your e-learning I have uploaded this uh, classific classification example frequency image classification so this is a zip file containing so if you unzip it okay, you would uh, the you will it will be a folder where you can observe what's uh, the features that has been extracted from the actual images so if you open this is a sample of input input sample and Y train is, a, is the corresponding output sample so I would suggest that you take a look of this so if you look at it it's just a, a series of numbers so you will see that across here this is the uh, we open the test sample or sorry the training samples so we would have the rows will give us the number of uh, samples 150 rows but actually more than that so if you were to open it just open using Excel if you download in your computer you just open Excel and it's it's easier for you to see 
how many rows that you have so this is training samples consists of 455 rows means 455 data if you count this okay a that's one two three four five 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So there are 30 features that has been extracted from each images. So how the method to extract the features are not, we, we don't need to know that for now. Um, but this has been done for us so now we have 155 data sorry 455 data sets with 30 features each for training and we can also observe the output So you will see zero means non-cancerous, one means cancerous. So it should have the same number of rows as the input data, 155. Okay. So we have uh, 455 sets of data. If we look at this test data we have let's see 114 test data all right so from these images so can you recall the procedure from these images uh, somebody has conveniently extract the features for us and separate the data set into test and training data we have 455 training data and 114 test data so the idea is we will fed this training data to our ANN once it has been trained we will test it with the test data so the test data uh, those features that has not been seen by the network okay so you can in the in the same folder there is this breast cancer uh, notebook okay, code that has been uh, given to you so you can just open it directly so if you open it directly you will see this uh, um, code with comments so this code is not actually mine it has been uh, modified slightly from the one written by a google developer Lawrence Moroni so if you you can also have a look at this video and watch his explanation so how would you understand this code that's the most important thing so if you understand it then you can easily modify it so remember we have these uh, files uh, representing the feature taken from the images so first of all you need to make sure uh, to ensure that the code can up can see your files okay the data files so the command to mount our Google Drive in this code is these two lines so you just run these two lines so that your program can can view the files so if you run it the first time then you will encounter this kind of message so you need to give an So 
we just click allow and just copy this code paste it here press enter and you should be able to see okay so mounted at content drive so now you can upload the the csv files so you so something to note here is you need to be able to ensure that the path this is the path that i copied the data okay that i've un unzipped the folder into this path if you are different then you need to first of all locate these uh, files in, and for example in this case mine is just as shown here uh, in here and in here so you can just right click your mouse and for example here you can copy this path so in order for you to paste here so once you have uh, successfully paste it so you will this is how this is the command pd dot read csv you can read csv file into matrix x train y train x test y test so x train we paired with y train the input and this is a supervised learning remember so you have the input training data consisting of a certain number of if i'm not mistaken 30 or 40 inputs and one output because the output would just be one or zero cancel or no cancel okay so you can execute this code okay and as in the previous code we install the the, the version of tensorflow the one that i'm using is this one that as far as I know works with the syntax that has been used tensorflow version 2.2.0 so then when you run the this file there would be a newer version of tensorflow so it may or may not work with the newer version so this is just to to ensure that the code is working So this is the important part where you define the E and N that you want to use. So remember we have the training data has 30 features. Okay, we have an image of unknown size but from that image we extract 30 features. So the input to the network should be 30 and the output will be 1. And we are using dense units so in between here we can choose so every line you add means you are adding a hidden layer so you can choose what kind of hidden layer you want to use this is this is subject to uh, your intuition your experience even trial and error and then you choose the activation um, function it, it could be if you recall it could be linear 10 sigmoid sigmoid this is rectified linear uh, activation function relu function and then uh, okay once you have defined the structure then you decide on what kind of optimizer so root mean square prop rms prop or binary cross entropy just like before when we did the regression problem you can choose many types and then uh, and then you run the training all right so over here let's import the tensor flow Keras models and then we can run the classifier compile and then how many how how much uh, 
how long you want to train the network, how many cycles, epoch, batch size, remember the sequential and the batch gradient descent. So you, in this case, we just use one. So we update the weights for every training data that we have. And we run it for 100 epochs. Okay, once you finish, then as you as you recall, we name our classifier as classifier. Okay, you can this classifier is the name of our ANN. You can just choose a different name, but then the classifier. Now, once it has been trained, you input the test data so remember the classifier has not seen the test data yet and we would collect the pr prediction right so based on the test data our trained neural network will predict whether it's cancer or not cancer so one or zero so if it's so while prediction is one if y larger than 0 0.5 l0 for y in where prediction means if it's less than 0 0.5 and then we compare with the, the predicted value and the test value that we have right and we check how many right and how many wrong answers how many correct prediction and how many wrong prediction so let's see how our classifier is so for the test 114 test samples it has 100% performance in this case, right? So that's how a simple image classification works. Uh, although uh, we, we are just using the image where the features has been extracted for us so that, and, and somehow it has been done nicely so it makes our ANN easy to, to be trained and easy to 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 test the cancer and non-cancerous image data based on the features uh, fed to it so that's all for this video and in the next one hopefully we will look at the ENN structure where you don't really have to use the uh, manually find the features of an image which is part of the tedious task in image classification so i hope you can try on your own and change some parameters of the of the code see what effect it has on the result so thank you very much see you again next time assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh